Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at turbocharged aircraft, uh, specifically those that are turbo normalized. Now the aircraft I chose to do for this demonstration is the Cessna 182T, which works really really well for us because it is a very very strong turbocharger. So let's go ahead and get started. So what is the big deal with turbochargers in airplanes? Well, it's actually pretty straightforward. As you know, as you get higher and higher and higher, you're going to be progressively having less and less air available for your engine. Obviously, if you have less air, that means you have to send less fuel. That means you're going to be developing less horsepower, which also means that you're going to have a ceiling that's going to be relatively low. Well, designers finally got smart and realized, well, why don't we just take turbochargers, which basically are a two-part system. One part is going to be the turbine stage, which will take exhaust to basically spin a compressor stage, which will force more air into the engine. So what they realize is if they put one of those on an airplane, we suddenly have a situation where we can have an aircraft that develops the same sort of horsepower as it does at sea level as it does at altitude. So what? Uh, let's go take a look. So this little gauge right here is our manifold pressure gauge, uh, which is, is going to be telling us exactly how much of a vacuum the engine is currently producing. Now remember, with an engine, if we're controlling its power by adjusting the amount of airflow allowed into the engine, when I pull this throttle all the way back, what I'm really doing is closing a little air valve, a little tiny thing, it's called a butterfly valve, that lets less air in. When I push the throttle forward, I'm essentially opening that valve up, and as you can see, it's trying to make me take off here, let's pop the brake on. And you can see now that since standard uh, sea level pressure is about 29.92, you can see at this current power setting, I'm exactly half open. I'm letting half the maximum pressure in an engine. But if I were to push the throttle all the way forward, you'll notice that if I can get all the way here, and now I'm producing sea level pressure. Now you're probably sitting here going, wait a minute, sea level pressure is 2992. Why are you getting 31? Well, the reason for that is because of the turbocharge drop in the front right now. It is actually forcing more air into the engine than atmospheric pressure can normally provide at sea level. Now, if it pushes all the way forward, you can see I get about 32 inches, which is significantly more. So let's go ahead and release this uh, beast here. I know it really, really wants to get airborne and uh, kind of get rolling. Now, why do we care? Well, first of all, we're going to be having a greater amount of horsepower. Obviously, horsepower is required for things like climb and takeoff and acceleration and everything like that. The second thing, and the more important thing, like I was mentioning just a few minutes ago, is the fact that our aircraft now has the ability to produce the same power at, from a sea level as it does now at altitude. So, for example, uh, we just taken off from a Gibraltar. They just had a really, really big update for it, so I just want to kind of take a peek at the rock there. <laughs> cool. So let's say we want to go and bring ourselves north towards uh, Spain, where they just had themselves a pretty big app update. Notice that my atmospheric pressure, as measured by my manifold pressure gauge, is staying constant, even though we're gaining greater and greater altitude. The reason it's doing that is because our turbocharger inside the aircraft is jamming as much air as it can into the cylinders. Now you're probably sitting here going, well, if it sends too much air into the cylinders, you're probably going to have a problem. And you would be absolutely correct. Um, the problem that we're going to have there is we're going to overboost the cylinders. One of the nice things built into here is you actually have a special valve that releases excess pressure until you hit the point where you can no longer produce that maximum pressure. Another neat quirk of turbo normalized engines is the fact that when you're using them, your air fuel mixture basically does not need to be manipulated at all until you hit the altitude where you start losing the actual pressure available to you. So I'm going to go ahead and level ourselves off here. I'll go and zoom in, make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. So we're going to pop it like this. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. We're climbing. I'm going to bring it to the right just a little bit. And I'll go ahead and pop on the automatic pilot so we can go ahead and take a look. So let's go flip it on. Ah, good old fashioned old school version. Love these. Do a specified altitude. I'll do uh, 18,000 feet. I'll go ahead and lock on heading hold as well. And we'll go ahead and give it a vertical speed mode to get this thing going a little bit quicker. There we go. Yeah, 500 feet per minute. I don't think so. I think we can do 1,000. Nice. So now as we're climbing, you're noticing, unlike a Cessna, a regular 172, that we're not losing power at all. We're not losing RPM at all. Our fuel flow will actually not change. But notice we're still climbing at a significant amount of power. Now what I'll do here is I'll cheat just a tiny bit. One, two, three. <laughs> Gotta love that button. So I'm going to cheat a little bit and uh, start getting some altitude. And what you're noticing is as the turbocharger is still working at its normal capacity, as we get higher and higher, basically that little emergency valve that lets off excess pressure is slowly starting to close because it can't compress enough air to keep us going. Now the magical altitude where this number can no longer stay constant is going to be your basically your turbo altitude. That's going to be uh, basically your limit. Once you cross that point, the turbocharger, no matter how hard it can work, will not be able to make your aircraft actually be able to keep producing that sea level power. You can see right now I'm crossing 7,200 feet here at 120 knots, and this thing is showing no signs of doing. That altitude, by the way, where the turbocharger can no longer produce that power is called your critical altitude. 
this is nice. I'm getting 1,000 feet per minute, and I'm at 9,000 feet in a Cessna 182. This is awesome. So we're just going to enjoy our little climb here. And again, notice my fuel flow is starting to hike itself downwards. Now, this, in my opinion, is probably something that is more Microsoft side than it is going to be the aircraft side. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and grab that mixture control and I'll go ahead and pop it out just a little bit. And you can see we restored right up to our full power again. I need just a little tiny bit to kind of get it going again. That should be it right there. And again, you can see my fuel fuel peak right there. That should give us that extra bit of power that we need. The nose of the plane's got to get off if it's a little nastiness here. Now, what we expect to happen now is as you start to approach the critical altitude, this manifold pressure will slowly start backing itself up. But what I'm actually noticing is that's not dropping. Instead, the gallons per hour is dropping, requiring me to manipulate the mixture. I find that kind of interesting, and I wonder if it's a graphical glitch or it's a, something internal to the code here. Because ideally, that number should stay more or less constant as we climb. As long as the manifold pressure is fixed, it shouldn't change. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're actually using this as basically a throttle position gauge as opposed to an actual manifold pressure gauge. Like I said, I would not be surprised, but you, like I said, you've noticed once we cross that magical critical altitude that we're no longer able to produce all that amazing power that we were at, at lower altitudes. Like I said, in a real plane, this never would start coming down right away. Just kind of interesting the way that works. So we'll go pop up to 16,000. Again, I have to play with the mixture here because you would be losing significant amounts of horsepower as you climb like this. And I think this mixture handles almost as far out as it could possibly go. And there it looks like 18,000 feet. And we're going to go ahead and level off. Awesome. One, two, three. Perfect. So you can see that even though I'm this high up, we're still producing a significant amount of horsepower. If this were a non-turbocharged aircraft, we would not be able to do this. We pretty much would have hit about 13, 14,000 feet and the plane would be like, I quit. Not that it would give us a thousand feet per minute all the way up here. This also means because the air is so rarefied, if you know the reference, we are able to achieve a much, much higher cruise speed. One other thing that you'll see on turbocharged aircraft as well is the ability to bleed some of the turbocharger air off and actually pressurize the cabin. Unfortunately, we do not have that capability as far as I know for this particular version of the aircraft. Otherwise, uh, you could use that as sort of a way. Of course, if you lost the engine that had the turbocharger, it goes your cabin pressurization as well. So hopefully this video, like I said, is interesting. There are multiple aircraft in the flight sim world that are turbocharged or turbo normalized. Some of the World War II planes especially have very powerful turbo superchargers that give you really stupidly high altitudes for the normal capability. But other than that, enjoy.